Hello, and welcome to the Puzzle Pleasure Channel. So the last couple of videos I've done where we flipped through a stock book have been um, fairly popular. So I wanted to uh, take advantage of that and do another one, yet uh, mix it up a little bit. So this is a stock book I bought on eBay um, probably over a year ago now. Actually, somewhat forgot about it. It's been in a pile of stock books, uh, both both ones I've put together and ones that I'm uh, taking apart that I've bought. And um, I was going through a few things uh, today and uh, and rediscovered it and wanted to uh, flip through. I was actually looking to see if there were going to be any Austrian stamps because I was I was doing some work on uh, post work on for the last video. And of, of course, I opened it up and found that it was Germany right away. Um, and I uh, didn't expect to find any Austrian stamps, but, that, but that's fine. Um, since Germany is one of my focus areas, I said, hey, let's take a look. And uh, I flipped through it to see what I find and uh, what I could find and found some really, really great stamps that I'm looking forward to incorporating into my collection soon. Um, I mean, this first page is, is a pretty good teaser, I hope. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's take a look through this together. And, uh, you know, if you'd like, uh, please subscribe to the channel. So this, again, is a stock book. I don't know the brand. It's not labeled with the brand. Um, I have uh, basically a elliptical globe here and a couple stamps uh, embossed in gold here. And that's pretty much it. It's obviously an older book, but it's still in very good condition. Um, a lot of um, books. Um, oh, by the way, here's a couple of the better stamps I found. We'll talk about these later. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, books, as they get older, will start to have the pages detach. Uh, or the uh, plastic um, sleeves here that the uh, stamps sit behind uh, can tear out at the bottom. This one's actually made in such a way that they're not glued on, like some of the more modern books. So there's actually a paper covering um, of multiple layers of paper, essentially, which make up a page. They're quite uh, hefty pages. Um, so, I, I mean, this is built to uh, uh, last, let's put it that way. Um, some of the notations, and you'll notice this, you haven't seen this in my stock books, but I do see this a lot, and I think if I were redoing a stock book as a stock book as opposed to an album, um, I would probably put in notations such as these. Um, in this case, I've noticed that um, the previous owner tended to only use notations on uh, remarkable stamps, either ones with a high value or um, ones that were maybe an unusual variety. Um, and that makes sense. And, you know, the rest of them are easy to look up, but you might not remember to go look it up um, if you didn't have a notation. So it's in roughly uh, chronological order. We have uh, some German states on this first page, which are always uh, great to collect. Um, we see that the Hilgo land with a questionable $1,000, uh, and in this case I believe I've noticed notations of euros most of the time, so I'm going to assume all these currencies are in euros, um, is missing, right? Um, so I don't know if the um, person selling this had acquired it and it's maybe just an eBay seller and pulled out the very best ones, um, but we also know there's a lot of counterfeits in Hilgo land, so um, you know, maybe it never really was a real one. Who knows? When I say in heel going, I mean from uh, stamps of that style uh, made in counterfeit. Uh, but certainly some nice looking material on this page. I love this uh, Hamburg cancel on the Prussian stamp. Um, and, and again, I really haven't probably spent more than, um, I don't know, 10 minutes flipping through this earlier today. And, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe an hour flipping through it uh, a year ago when I bought it, if I had to guess. Uh, so really looking forward to looking some of these ups. Uh, certainly interested in these Wurttemberg stamps um, from 1916. Uh, don't remember having seen those before, uh, but I have the right book. So I will uh, be checking across my Michael catalogs uh, in the near future. So then we get into early German Empire. Um, one of the a couple of the eagle and circles. And, uh, and then into some of the more common stuff. Um, but beautiful stamps. Um, you know, a lot of uh, really nice cancels it looks like, which is nice. Um, a couple of nice uh, commemoratives. So uh, again, really exciting. I have a couple more notations, uh, one floating around here of 20 euros. I'm not sure uh, if that's fallen out of place or whether uh, the stamp is missing as well. A couple of these 50s, that's not usually, a, that's a pretty good stamp as well. It looks like there's a nice line of those. Over here, uh, you know, again, we're progressing. We still have more Germania, because uh, there's quite a few different uh, series of Germanias um, throughout early Germany. 
and then we get into the um, Baron with the Deutsches Reich um, overprint. Um, one of these really, really large ones. It's got a 14 euro um, marking on it. Uh, uh, the 135 over 14, the way I reinterpret these is basically that's going to be the Michael number 135, and then 14 being, I believe, in euros. Um, Republic Inflationism, 1919, uh, for this series, right? Uh, so, you know, good notes. Uh, I think I had a lot of notes later on where he just marks the division between years. Uh, which is nice as well. Oh, I say he. Maybe it was a woman. I shouldn't assume. Um, you know, more. Uh, we're getting now into the, um, I guess, early uh, inflation years. Getting into the uh, the larger ones here. Pretty common stuff at this point, but a lot of used. Um, let's get into the hyperinflation years coming up here. Um, Let's see, I don't know if I can read all of this one. Something not, no, I'm not going to get that, 1923. Uh, but again, a lot of uh, what would appear to be postally used ones. Um, hopefully there'll be some interesting cancels in there. I've uh, recently gotten um, one of the Infla books, I think maybe it's book 13 if my memory serves, uh, so I can start checking some of those cancels on these. Very nice. We here see here this one in reverse. Um, it is uh, it has a um, a perfin. Uh, looks like an LB. Hopefully that's still visible. Uh, that's the other thing I like that the person has done here is that um, when they have something uh, remarkable on the back of the stamp or in the perfins on both sides, but it's easy to read from the back. People typically look at perfins from the back because of the contrast. Um, but we will see later on. Um, there's uh, some stamps with what I think, and I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, but the Rocksucker number, um, essentially um, a number on the back, which makes them slightly more valuable. Um, and you'll see that um, those are placed uh, backwards uh, in the catalog amongst its peers without that number. So here we have eagles, um, some famous persons, and uh, some more. Now here we are in the early 30s with the classic uh, Hindenburg medallions. Uh, here we have one with the uh, selvage attached. Uh, this one would be uh, worth a little bit more as well, most likely. Generally, when you have the bars and number, that's a premium. So, nice to see all these beautiful Hindenburgs. Uh, here's another one of those, so that would be bring a bit of a premium. Nice one. I like the two-tone bars, too. Uh, up here we have one, I haven't even looked at this myself, with a wonderful cancel. Uh, so airmail, cancel, with a plane, a German eagle, and um, the full uh, circle there with city and date. Lovely. 1936, we have some, some sports ones. Olympics, I should say, the 36 Olympics. Hopefully this is still showing up well. Then uh, we get into the, of course, the Hitlers. Um, those are very, very common and of fairly low value. Um, we have some of the uh, official or uh, Dienstmark uh, stamps here. Uh, this is the nice uh, early series here, uh, followed by some, you know, they're all fairly early, but followed by some later ones. Um, you know what, I don't think I have all of these. Well, now I do, right? But I'd, I think I might have only had a, a spare, uh, sparse couple of this set. Uh, now I have the 2, 3, 5, uh, 10, 20, 25, 40, and 50. That certainly could be all of them, um, but I'd have to look to make sure. So that's a, a wonderful find as well. There's some notations here of 1903. And uh, let's see, the 1 is... Uh, catalog number one is, is seven euro. Again, this is written at the time that it was uh, at the time it was written, right? So I actually compared a couple values, and they've gone up since then, according to my Michael catalog. So the stamp two, which is probably this one, is seven. Stamp seven and eight, uh, two fifty each. 
So some decent uh, mid values there. Um, some wonderful stuff. We have um, the Luff post here. This is, um, I'm going to forget the, um, oh, military field post. Yeah, field post. Uh, there's, I think, just two or three field post stamps um, for Germany. This is one of them. Uh, so in the rest of this is more of the uh, official stamps, which is some really lovely stuff. You know, great designs. And uh, then we have some of the field post uh, with cancels. I haven't pulled all of these out to look at them, and I probably won't do it all here. But uh, great, great uh, on piece pieces. Here's one with the uh, the round cancel with the um, a very very rough. It's it's um, not a very clear, but it's the eagle with swastika underneath. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble if I try to pull all these out right now. But uh, some some neat stuff. Yeah, I'll put that right back. And then we get into uh, the post-war stuff. So this, I believe, is um, the Allied zone. Uh, so we have uh, you know, a nice representation of that set here. Um, is this Allied zone or is this Soviet zone uh, stuff? I'm not sure about those. I've got to look that up again. I get confused because I think some of this... Later stuff, I'm not sure. I, I think I recognize some of these from Soviet Zone. Now, this is definitely an odd zone here. Um, so, uh, we're definitely into the British, um, say, uh, British and American Allied Zone. Uh, at this point, kind of progressing chronologically as well. When I say kind of, I mean probably absolutely. Um, I'm just looking over to see if there's anything particularly remarkable here. Now this one has um, a catalog number 33 with a 22 um, euro dollar mark next to it. Uh, so that's a, maybe a nicer higher value one. And I'm only really pointing out the higher value ones because they're, they're, they're somewhat interesting. I'm not trying to get rich here. I'm a collector. I'm not reselling generally. Um, but you know the higher value ones I, I equate with rarity. and. Uh, and, and maybe the cost to acquire, right? So if for me, I'm looking to complete a collection, anytime I come across a high value one, that's one that I might not have to buy or pay uh, a high price for in the future. So that's exciting, right? Um, the common ones, uh, you know, you'll get dozens. I mean, I have boxes full of most of these. Uh, let's see, what do we see on this page? Um, so this is more um, post-war, um, Allied Zone, American Zone, I believe, and then we're getting into here. Uh, we get into the uh, West Germany, right? So post-war West Germany after the Allied, but roughly the replacement for the Allied Zone, or American British Allied Zone. It's post-war West Germany as opposed to um, post-war East Germany, which replaces a Soviet Zone, uh, and then of course you have Berlin in between the two. And you'll see there's a few blanks here, and uh, I pulled these out. Um, I was, uh, there's some higher value stamps, and it's not, again, not so much the higher value that I was interested in, but they are stamps that were absent from my collection, and I knew it. As soon as I saw them, I was like, I need to grab those out of here. Those are going to go right in the collection, so I carded those up a little bit earlier tonight, and uh, really excited to find them, and there were definitely some decent values. We will take a look at that later. Um, I can't say that I found one that was 120 euro low, so, uh, or maybe that was for the pair, and that does make sense. I did find that then. Uh, so, moving forward, we get into more West Germany, and here's what I mentioned about um, the um, Ruxinger number. And you know what? I, again, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. That's how. I've been pronouncing it in my own head now for years when I read it in the Michael catalog. Um, you know, I, I haven't tried that hard because I'm, I'm not usually conversing about it, so this is the first time. I'm probably embarrassing myself, but essentially that is, and, and uh, I guess I'll probably have to take a camera shot of this because I don't know how well you'll see it, but this number here, in this case, it's, it's not a very good example. It's a, it's a light one. looks like a 17A0, and so that's essentially, I believe, a control number uh, that they print on the back of um, ever s one in every so many stamps. I think it's one in five stamps, maybe. Uh, with a particular printing process, so it's not even on, on all printing processes. 
um, but many of the definitive stamp series um, in West Germany have this feature and uh, these certainly command a premium. Now the 10 and 20 here are the most common stamps that you'll run into I think because they were most likely um, the uh, standard postage for maybe a couple weights or a couple distances. Again, I'm not an expert there. Um, I should research that sort of thing. Um, and here's another one here with a 0865. Typically what I have found, and of course, um, rarity can come in for many reasons, right? But typically what I found is when you get these on the higher denomination stamps, um, they're maybe worth a little bit more. Um, and most likely because there's probably less higher denomination stamps and therefore less of the one in five or less uh, numbers on the back. So uh, here we get into um, a bunch of, uh, we'll have a few definitives there, but a bunch of commemoratives. Um, you know, some great designs at this place. We're, we're still pretty early here, 58. Um, so I think they start at uh, 49, which is where, where um, uh, the, the post-war Allied zone switches to uh, West Germany, and the BDR. And through, we have uh, a couple more with the number on the back. Looks like a three something. Sometimes those numbers are incomplete, so that second digit is unreadable. So here in this German portrait series, um, there's there's a really interesting feature, um, and they're indicated here, and this is Michael notation as well. Um, the paper type. So here's the X paper type. Uh, so all these up here are standard regular paper. And then down here in the Y's, and I'm assuming it continues to the next page, we have fluorescent paper. Um, and I have probably half a dozen or more lights on in the room right now, so it's going to be really hard to see these. But let me turn off a couple. Um, bear with me. I'm going to stop the camera. Okay, you probably can't see much of anything right now. But I have um, a UV light. It does um, shortwave and longwave. Um, I believe I'm on the shortwave right now, which is what's typical. And uh, maybe I have it backwards. So the X is the fluorescent, and the Y in this case is the non fluorescent. So my mistake there. Um, but hopefully, you can see I'm trying to get the, the device out of the camera's way as well. Maybe I'll hold it sideways. Um, but you can see these up here are fluorescent, uh, fluorescing yellow, hopefully. And then this row down at the bottom. Uh, do not fluoresce yellow. We'll flip over to the next page and there's no more. Uh, so well, I'll back us up to here for now. But um, I don't think I've taken the time to show um, difference in papers and fluorescent stamps before. So I'll uh, let this be a first introduction and hopefully I'll do more in the future. And I, I can tell I just looked up to my monitor and you barely see that in the camera. But uh, it's a pretty interesting topic but hard to photograph. Okay, looks like we can see things again. So we're into the uh, the early 60s still, 62, 63. So he's giving me the date and the Michael catalog number where the year starts. Fantastic way to do things. It's neat to learn from watching what other people do, or in this case, investigating what somebody else has done. Here we're up to 65 and into a different uh, commemorative series or a de definitive series. And uh, again, we have more of those numbers. That's a fairly bold one. Lots of duplicates here. Some of these sets are very, very common. Um, there's certainly not a complete um, year sets here. There's, there's definitely, uh, I believe, stamps missing. Oh, and I haven't confirmed that, but I think there's many more stamps. In fact, this confirms it because this would be a set of four. These uh, fairy tale ones are generally a set of four. There's quite a few of those. Uh, let's see here. This particular definitive set may be one of the ones that doesn't have the numbers on the back of any of the stamps. Mostly used here. I'm surprised we're not seeing more mint, but maybe as I said earlier, the person had a separate um, album for mints. Um, I bought albums before that were mostly mint as well, so. Oh, this is a neat one. I don't think I've seen this with uh, boy. If I if I've seen it at all, I don't believe I've seen it with full borders. Um, I'm not sure if that's clear to you, but hopefully it is. 
So it may be a new stamp for me, or it may just be a new condition of the stamp, if you will. Uh, let's see, anything else that stands out? I mean, I'm, um, I'm just as interested to flip through this as, as I hope the audience here is, um, because while I've done it once or twice, there's so much to take in, and uh, I've never really spent a lot of time uh, digging in. So here's an interesting series on safety. Again, we have numbers on the back of some of them. Here we have a marker, um, $4 here. Um, I'm wondering if that's for the set of, of four stamps that's behind it most likely. It's unclear in that case, but I bet it is. What do we have here? And we're up to 75 here at this point, 1975. stuff. There is, I believe, a 500 in this series as well. Possibly even something below that. Before, but two to five, maybe, but maybe something between. Some more really nice stamps. Uh, some of these flower series, and there's actually quite a few flower series like this, are quite nice. Uh, here we have vertical pair. Here we have, I'm um, forgetting what these are called, um, essentially booklet pane pieces, so segments of a booklet pane. Um, so here we'd have the bottom of the booklet, or the bottom side of a booklet, and I think these came eight to a sheet, if we will, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, of course a, a 10 and a 50, so different combinations. Um, having these attached um, brings additional value. There's In the Michael catalog, there's different ways to um, label these. They'll have their own numbers, if you will. Um, and even the individual stamps with the flat border without, with missing a side of perforation, either at the top or the bottom, will generally command a premium. Here's an example of that. So here's a single out of one of those booklets, put it over here, uh, with the flat edge at the top. If you had one of the flat edge at the bottom, it might have a different price than the flat end at the top. So just one more thing to always be considering when going through German stamps. And uh, here's a wonderful cancel on this uh, three pair from a booklet. Three pair, one, a three, a set of three, a, a thruple, if that's a word, I think it is a word. A couple of these wonderful Max Lieberman stamps. So many great topics. As I mentioned in other videos, you could spend a day studying a single stamp. Great stuff, great condition stuff. Here we are into the early 80s, or 82, 83. Getting towards the end, this might be the last page. We'll see if there's something on the back of it. 84, 85. I think. Um, I think we get to about 90, 91, and then it turns to um, Unified Germany again. So certainly not in this book. So 86 is where this book ends. Uh, but, you know, a lovely book in really good condition, and uh, certainly a lot of stamps to continue to dig through. And I promised I would show uh, some of the stamps that I pulled out because I was really excited to find them. So this one is one of the last stamps uh, from the uh, post-war uh, British and American Allied Zone. Uh, there's two of these, catalog value of 450. Um, that one's got a pretty nice cancel on it. And then we have the West Germany um, catalog number 116 uh, uh, with a 48 euro price tag. There were actually two of those. And then we had catalog number 118. Uh, just a great stamp as well uh, with catalog value of 14 euro and I'll stack this one on top uh, catalog 19 part of the same set again 14 euro and then lastly these last two I'll lay them out here so we have uh, 121 and 122 with 50 and 50 euro 
uh, a lovely pair in really nice condition with, in this case, not not necessarily complete bold readable postmarks, but the second best thing, which is a really light uh, postmark, which doesn't distract from the stamp, uh, which um, is is interesting and nice in its own way, right? As opposed to um, an obliterating postmark, uh, which uh, makes a mess of the stamp. So uh, all really attractive stamps here, and some higher value stuff, at least for me, right? I don't um, I don't generally have the multi hundred dollar stamps, uh, so these are these are big finds for me. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at how somebody else has built their stock book. I've certainly seen a lot done in this manner, and, uh, and it certainly makes sense to me as well. Um, I could see myself doing something like this if I was a dealer uh, wanting to manage my stock. Thanks again for watching.